In this video, we're, I'm going to talk about accessing the different elements in an array, or changing them, or getting rid of them, that type of activity. What I have here is a vector called temperature, or temp, and uh, so I've put in some temperatures for the week, starting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. So if I hit return, you can see we have this, this vector. So let's say I want to know what was the temperature on Thursday. Well, Thursday is the fourth element in this particular um, array. So if I say Thursday underscore temp, remember to make our variables descriptive. So I'm going to say Thursday underscore temp is going to be the vector temp. That's the one I'm concerned with, right? That's where all my information is. And this time, I'm going to give it an index. So instead of saying t sub 4, perhaps you're used to t sub i, that type of uh, summation uh, index indices. Um, in MATLAB, we use the name of the vector. And then in parentheses, we put its position or uh, index. So Thursday temp is the temperature that is located in position 4 in the vector temp. I hit return, and it tells me the actual value in that position is 26. How about, um, perhaps I want to know something that happened on the weekend. So say weekend temp. Let's see what those are. Um, one way we can do this is we can say temp. And again, now I want two positions. I want the sixth and seventh position. So I simply hand those two values to MATLAB in a way that it understands it, and it understands it with another array. So I'm going to put it in brackets and say the sixth and the seventh temperature. So that's my input into this uh, index. So it should give me two values, 25 and 28, which it did. Great. The other thing I could do is I could say, um, I'll define an index. I'm going to say uh, index equals, and I'm going to say it's this vector um, 6 and 7. I'm going to hit the semicolon so we know what that looks like so I don't need to see the output. Great. And now I'm going to say uh, week weekend temp. Um, I'm going to call it temp2 because this is our second attempt here, um, is temp, and now I'll just give it that name. I created a, a variable called index which has two values, and I'll give temp that, and it hands me the same, same idea. MATLAB also has a word that is similar to the length of a, of a matrix. It, it basically houses that length of a matrix, and the word is called end. So I could say something like, give a variable name last temp. Tell me the last temperature value in that array temp. And I want the last one. I don't really care how long. I don't have to know that it's the seventh position or anything like that. It could be a very long array of temperatures. I just want to know the last reading. So I would just type end. So tell me at the end of this, what is it? Last temp uh, could perhaps also have been done like this. All right, should give me the same thing. Go get the length of temperature, and then find the temperature at that last value, which it did. All right, so end and the length are pretty much the same. We can use this, um, well, let's say week mm, underscore temp. We can use this end as a sort of a scalar. Um, I could say, tell me the temperature of the week, so Monday through Friday, I wouldn't want the last two, right? So I'll go from <clears throat> um, 1, 2, ah, I'm using the colon operator now, so what I'm dealing with is a, a vector, so I don't need the square brackets on a colon operator. 
So I'm still giving it a, an array, and it's going from 1, and I want to go all the way to 5, or I want to go from the end and back 2. So subtract 2 from the end. The end was 7. If I subtract 2, that number should be 5, right? So I go from 1 to 5, and I've just handed temp um, its index values, and I get the temperature during the week. Now perhaps we made a mistake. We look at our data and we say, oh, the temperature on Tuesday was not uh, 25, it was actually 23. I want to I want to change that. And one way to do that is to retype the entire vector, which would be kind of a mess, especially if I, say, downloaded data from a thermocouple or something that had hundreds of values. I don't want to retype it or re-download it. Um, I just want to change that one particular data point. So this time, rather than uh, going and getting a value from uh, the temperature array and storing it somewhere else, what I'm going to do now is go to temp. Uh, let's say it's Tuesday, so it's the second location. So this is saying in that second location, I'm going to reassign. Remember, equals is an assignment. So the second location in temp is now going to be reassigned with a different value. Let's say it was 25, maybe it's 23 now. It will give me the entire vector again, temp, and you'll notice that in the second location, right here, it has changed uh, to 23. Great. Uh, we could change more than just one. We could say temp, uh, let's go, let's change two values. Let's change the first and the last. Let's change uh, the first position and the end. Let's use end again. Okay, we're going to change the first and the second. So since I'm changing two values, um, I need to give it two values. So let's give it Let's change 20 and uh, let's change it to 30. So in the first position, the temperature is going to be changed to 20, and in the last position, it's going to be changed to 30. And you can see that happened. There's a lot of flexibility with this, right? Perhaps we didn't even want Sunday's temperature. Uh, we could say temp and equals an empty space, an empty array. So I just give it basically an empty array or an empty set. So it's going to replace the end temperature with nothing. And in essence, it just erases it. OK, so that's how you can change values in array. You can go and find them. You can. Um, replace them with other values.